In the 14th century, a new cultural and intellectual movement called Renaissance Humanism emerged in France. This movement believed in exploring sources, delving into Greek and Latin texts and religious scriptures like the Bible. Following this movement, a group known as the Circle of Meaux was formed in 1521 by some French reformists. However, internal conflicts ensued, bringing about the doctrine of Calvinism and sparking religious tensions that would bring about 30 years of wars filled with bloodshed and division in France. Join us as we unravel the complexities of the French wars and religion, exploring the clashes between these two religious groups and their profound impact on the people and the course of French history. Of heresy. The French War of Religion was a religious war between the Protestants and Catholics that lasted over 30 years due to several factors, such as Reformation ideas, political tensions, factionalism, and religious tensions. These religious tensions were stirred by the execution of some Protestants by King Francis I in 1534 for condemning Catholic beliefs thereby causing a riot against the Protestants and forcing them to worship in secret. Now, while this riot was ongoing, some militant Protestants formed a violent group called the Waldensians. Unfortunately, the Waldensians had attracted the attention of King Francis I. Hence, the king ordered that they be executed in 1545. Following the order, some soldiers stormed the village of Merindal, where they were known to be based massacring everyone in it, and destroying other nearby villages, taking away hundreds of men for slavery. Upon Francis I's death in 1547, his son Henry II succeeded him, passing the Edict of Chateaubriand in 1551, which restricted Protestant worship and banned their literature. Meanwhile, a new Protestant doctrine known as Calvinism, which believed in predestination and the sovereignty of God, overgrew in France, further angering the Catholics. Moving on, in 1559, Henry II died, passing secession to his young son, Francis II, who also died suddenly the following year, stirring further religious tensions following the arrest of Condé, a Protestant leader who was suspected of killing the young king. After Francis II's death, his mother, Catherine de' Medici, became the regent for her young son, Charles IX. Hence, she continued King Henry's second failed policy of heresy eradication, enacting conciliatory measures like the Edicts of 1561, which recognized Catholicism but reduced penalties for heresy. She also approved the Colloquy of Poissy in 1561, which aimed to reconcile Catholic and Protestant differences. However, it failed, bringing about chaos. As tensions increased, the government passed the Edict of St. Germain in 1562, allowing Protestants to worship publicly outside towns and privately inside them. However, in 1562, some supporters of the royal family of the Guise family attacked and massacred Calvinists during their service. This massacre would, however, bring about the start of the first religious war in France. The French Wars of Religion Now, despite the approval of the Edict of Saint Germain, the Protestants felt unsafe following the Vassy Massacre. Hence, the nobles, led by Condé, decided to free the king from his evil advisors. And so, on April 2nd, 1562, they captured the city of Orleans. This bold move inspired Protestant groups across France to do the same in cities like Angers, Blois, Tours, and even Lyon. However, after successfully capturing these cities, some local Protestants attempted to take control of Toulouse, but were faced with strong resistance from angry Catholic mobs, causing a battle between them 
which resulted in the death of over 3,000 people who were primarily Protestants. As the conflict continued, more massacres occurred in places like Sens and Tours. Now feeling pressured by the guys, the Crown decided to revoke the edict. This decision further escalated the conflict, causing major battles in Rouen, Dreux, and Orleans, leading to the assassination of Francis, the Duke of Guise in Orleans. The assassination's aftermath heightened tensions, causing Catherine de Medici to sign an agreement, restoring religious freedom to the Protestants, called the Edict of Amboise in 1563, bringing temporary peace to France. However, shortly after signing the Edict of Amboise, King Charles IX was declared capable of assuming his role as king, so Catherine's regency ended. Now, rumors that some religious groups were slandering and destroying religious properties in Flanders, Belgium, began spreading, causing Charles IX to support the Catholics in Flanders. But when the Protestants in France heard about his support, they feared a Catholic remobilization. In response to this fear, the Protestants attempted to capture Charles IX, but were unsuccessful. So they attacked and massacred Catholic laypeople and clergy the following day, provoking the start of the Second War in 1567. The Second War, however, lasted briefly, ending the following year after the signing of a similar truce agreement called the Peace of Longemo, which once again gave religious freedoms to the Protestants. Now at peace, things quickly took a dramatic turn, despite the truce, as some Catholics continued their siege in Poilerons, forming resistance groups. Fearing prosecution, Protestant leaders like Condé and Colony ran away, leaving behind some Protestants who were unfortunately attacked and killed. And so, to restore peace, the Edict of saint Maur was signed in September to appease the Catholics, removing all Protestant freedom to worship. However, this edict angered the Protestants, who hired William of Orange to fight for their cause. But on getting to the palace, William was said to have taken the crown's bribe, leaving the country and the Protestants to their fate. And so, with no one to fight for them, the Protestants built a strong army with the help of forces in southeast France, Protestant militias from Germany, and sponsorship and support from Queen Elizabeth of England. Meanwhile, the Catholics, led by Duke d'Anjou, who later became King Henry III, had troops from Spain, the Papal States, and the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. Now having a strong army, the Protestants began attacking cities in the Poitou and Saint-Ange regions, Angoulême and Cognac, to protect the town of La Rochelle. However, during the Battle of Jarnac in March 1569, Condé was killed so Colony took over. As the battle continued, Charles IX wanted peace. So the following year, in August, the Peace Edict of Saint Germain and Lay was negotiated by Jean d'Albret, giving shared religious rights to the Protestants. With France now at peace again, the Crown attempted to restore unity between the factions. Hence, they proposed marriage between Navarre, the son of Jean d'Albret, and Margaret of Valois the king's sister. While the idea proved good for both factions, Albert initially refused, fearing for her son. However, the wedding took place on August 1572. Now, a few days after the wedding, the Protestant leader, Colony, was shot on his way home, infuriating the Protestants who demanded justice and threatened to kill Guise, the suspected culprit, in front of the king. Now alarmed about the possibility of another war, the court decided to go after Protestant leaders, killing them first, including Colony. Following this attack, other militant Catholics began killing Protestants, believing it was the wish of the king. Now, despite the unrest and chaos caused by the massacre, King Charles IX boasted to ambassadors that he had ordered the killings to stop a Protestant uprising, celebrating the deaths. And so the killings continued, spreading far to many cities, resulting in the death of over 10,000 Protestants, including men, women, and children. The massacre also stirred up further military actions in the Catholics, 
as they attack cities like Sommiers, Saint-Cyr, and La Rochelle. The war would, however, come to an end following the appointment of Henry, the Duke of Anjou, as King of Poland, and the signing of the Edict of Boulogne, which took away some rights from the French Protestants, allowing them to worship freely only in three towns, La Rochelle, Montauban, and Nimes, with limitations to worship only in their homes. The Fifth War Following the appointment of Henry, the Duke of Anjou, as king, a dispute arose between Charles IX and his brother, the Duke of Alencon, which led to many Protestants gathering around Alencon for support. However, three months after the Duke of Anjou left in 1574, King Charles IX died, causing his mother to declare herself regent until Henry returned. When Henry secretly returned to France and was crowned King Henry III, his brother Alencon escaped from the court, forcing them to negotiate a truce with him. Yet chaos continued, and so they were forced to agree to his terms in 1576, forming a new agreement known as the Edict of Beaulieu, or Peace of Monsieur. The Edict of Beaulieu initially granted special privileges to the Calvinists. Still, it was short-lived as the Catholic League, led by Duke Henry I of Guise, aimed to undermine and combat the Calvinists. And despite King Henry III's diplomatic efforts, tensions escalated, leading to conflicts in regions like Poitou and Guyenne. With no other choice, the king eventually revoked most Calvinist privileges, signing new agreements in 1577. Yet the struggle between the Calvinists and the Catholic League continued in France amidst the chaos caused by the Dutch Revolt. Now, after the death of King Henry's younger brother, Francis, he listed Henry of Navarre, a Protestant, as his next succession. But this decision stirred opposition from the Duke of Guise, who allied with Spain to prolong the war against the French Protestants. Under pressure, King Henry III signed the Treaty of Namur in 1585, which removed Henry of Navarre from his succession and suppressed Protestantism. Little did he know that signing this treaty would lead to a revolt in Paris on the day of the barricades in 1588, causing the Committee of Sixteen to assume control. In an attempt to restore peace to France, the Edict of the Union was signed. Yet unrest persisted until Henry III took preemptive action, leading to further complications. Now with the ongoing tensions, in 1589, Henry III died, causing Henry of Navarre, his previous succession, to be crowned king. However, this proved challenging for France as Henry of Navarre's succession brought about division and the start of another war. Nevertheless, Henry of Navarre, now crowned Henry IV, was victorious in the Battle of Arques and Ivory. Although he experienced difficulty during the sieges on Paris and Rouen, forcing him to convert to Catholicism in 1594 to gain acceptance in Paris. Yet, despite converting to Catholicism, the wars of religion continued until 1598, resulting in the capture of Amiens in 1597 and the signing of the Edict of Nantes in 1598, which granted substantial rights to the Protestants eventually bringing the French wars of religion to an end. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and unique stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.